why should you buy a WRX? My WRX is a 2006 WRX limited edition. It's got the heated seats, uh, all the leather all the way through, leather back seats. Basically, it's got STI trim, just it's a WRX. So far, what I got done to mine is obviously an exhaust. Uh, I got a top mount intercooler from Mishimoto, SPT intake, Cobb boost controller solenoid. Uh, pretty much your basic ready to mod, just WRX stuff. It's all supporting mods for whatever I'm gonna do. When I bought the car, it had a turbo XS blow off valve on it, non 50-50. So I took that off because I didn't like what it was doing. It was messing with the RPMs and it was making it jump all over the place. So what I did is I put the stock or circuit fire back on, the car runs 100% better. The trunk, I can put three sets of golf clubs, shoes, and a cooler back there. I mean, it is absolutely huge for whatever reason. I don't know why. The front seats, for whatever reason, they can go so far back that no one can sit in the back seat. Right now, I'm sitting two notches from the furthest closest to the steering wheel, and I'm, I'm about six feet tall. Yeah, that may be a little bit close, but I have a stage two clutch, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to engage the clutch. This, this one does have a seven inch touchscreen radio. Uh, it's kind of a nice feature to have. I mean, everyone pretty much puts an aftermarket radio in their car. Who doesn't? The power. The other day, as you can tell, there's snow outside. The other day, I worked for a plowing company, and I was working, and after, I have to park on the street, so I had to pull out of some snow. I brushed off my car completely. I looked around. The car was buried up to the rockers. The front bumper was covered in snow. I was like, oh, man, this is it's going to be rough that I'm gonna be slipping, I'm gonna to have to get out and shovel, but I didn't have a shovel, so I'd be kicking with my feet, which were soaking wet already. So I decided that, you know what, I'm gonna get in, I put it in first, and uh, yeah, I pulled right out. I mean, literally, I didn't lose one, one wheel of traction, the thing just hooked all the way through, turned right through the corner, and uh, I had no problem. Honestly, I couldn't be more happy with the car. That, that's what sold me on it because that was my first snowstorm and the first time I ever actually could have been stuck in snow, but you, you've all seen videos. No one gets stuck in a Subaru in snow. I mean, come on, that's not even a thing. Like, for real, come on. Next thing, motors. Everyone says, oh yeah, you don't protect your motor, it's gonna blow, and all Subarus are gonna blow at some point in time. No, you have to think in the long run. If you take care of your car, it will take care of you. And because the turbo models do tend to go rather than the NAs, it's because people enter boost at 2,000 RPMs. My car is tuned on 19 pounds of boost. If I boost at 2,000 RPMs, that's putting a lot of strength and tension on my ring lands. That, that's what's gonna blow your motor, okay? Now, for me, I always roll into it, okay? Whenever I'm gonna enter boost, Either I have to downshift or I wait till about 3,000 RPMs rolling into it and then I actually enter boost. Then I, that's when I really just, I can step on it then. I mean, so like right now I'm at like 2,100 RPMs. If I was to step on it, there'd be so much turbo leg, so much leg in the whole car that it would feel like it's not even wanting to go. So basically all you gotta do is just protect your motor, know when to actually boost. Don't be stupid with it. And if you're racing someone, wind out the car, don't short shift because then it gets really herky-jerky and bucky. So I mean, I guess that's all I can say. Another feature I do like about the car, parts are relatively getting cheap now. I know everyone says, oh, you could build an Evo for half the price of a Subaru. Well, the sound isn't the same. An Evo sounds like a Turbo Civic. It's basically the same motor, I mean, okay, maybe not the same motor, but still, it's set up the same way, they sound the same, there's no significance in the sound. That Subaru sound, you'll never hear that rumble from another car. I mean, come on. Even when you know you're standing on the side of the road and you can, you can hear a Subaru coming, you're looking around. I do it. I'm in the parking lot at Target or I'm in the parking lot at Meijer and I hear a Subaru coming, I turn my head and I'm looking. I mean, I'm looking all around. Another thing I really like about Subarus, external wastegates. 
Yep. I recently bought an external wastegate for my car. I didn't put it on yet, but I also have a new turbo coming too, a Blouch 16G turbo. Yeah, that's a pretty big turbo. It's ball bearing Garrett turbo, 16G. I think since I'm on stock internals, I'm gonna run 20 pounds of boost no more. I don't wanna blow my car. That's one thing. This car has 76,000 miles. I'm the third owner and it's got a clean Carfax all the way through. I don't wanna blow my motor. So I'm just gonna stay at a safe PSI. I'm gonna have it tuned by a shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin here called Endless Auto Sports. Really good friend. Uh, my best friend, his girlfriend, that's her stepbrother. So it's they're like real close. But I just, I don't wanna have motor problems. That's why everything I've done to the car is to help the car itself. I realized that during the summer my car was getting kinda of hot. So I bought a Mishimoto top mount intercooler. You can get a process west or upgrade to an STI one. They do all the same thing. I went Mishimoto because that's what he recommended and that's what I could get the best deal on. So essentially, just think, think outside the box and think, what will this do to my car? My SPT intake is a little small, so be it. I mean, it, it runs, I mean, just when I'm entering full boost, the car can't suck in enough air because the intake is too small. That's basically what happens. So, I mean, there's, my tuner, his name's Franz, he said there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's with what I have now, it's fine. When I put that Blouch 16G on, I need to get a bigger intake, is what he said. I can go with a Cobb box or get a any, any other intake, what he recommended, and I highly recommend it because I've seen all good things on it. If any of you are putting an aftermarket intake in, KS Tech. It's literally KS and then Tech intake. That's what they're called. They make super good intakes. They're a small company, so all their parts are genuine. I mean, they don't mass produce. Personally, I think it is the intake for the Subaru. 